Nestle's Ever Ready, the Instant Cocoa. Nestle's Quick for Great Chocolate Milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy have become infected with a dangerous, weakening sickness and are frantically searching a laboratory on Venus, hoping to find the one medicine that will cure them. If we don't get some of that solution soon, we'll be of no use to ourselves or anyone. Believe me, sir. Right now, I'm just going on my own momentum. Up there on the top shelf, that bottom. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. That's the remedy. Be careful lifting it down. That's probably all there is in the whole place. We can only get it to the ship before Drokov finds it. Commander, it's Drokov. And he's got a blast gun. Commander, the blast smashed the bottle. The medicine's gone. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting Space Patrol adventure, The Fugitive from Tolarma. Hi, Space Patrollers. Commander Corey here. How'd you like to have a soda fountain in your home? You can, you know. I'm not kidding. If you have a big brown yellow can of Nestle's Quick on the shelf, your kitchen is a real soda fountain. Because Nestle's Quick makes the smoothest, richest chocolate milk you've ever tasted. That's the kind of drink you could never make at home before. And now... Well, you can have it any time you like. Quick fixes so fast, it practically makes itself. Now, listen to this. You just pour yourself a glass of milk. That comes first. Then you add two teaspoons of Nestle's Quick. Quick starts right in to mix itself. All you have to do is spoon it around once or twice. And there you are. A big, frosty, cool glass of chocolate milk that tastes just like those delicious Nestle's chocolate bars. You can't beat that anywhere. Quick gives you something more. It helps build strong bones and sound teeth because it's fortified with vitamin D. Now, believe me, fellas and girls, you're going to love having quick around for easy fixing, for a solid nourishment, and for delicious soda fountain treats. Mom will see that when you have Nestle's Quick, you drink your milk up better than ever. So today, ask her to bring home the big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick. That's Q-U-I-K, Quick. And it's delicious. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Fugitive from Tolorma. Brokoff, a criminal from another solar system, is using a strange and powerful weapon to gain control of the United Planets. By releasing millions of microscopic spores from a poisonous plant into a city's atmosphere, he can reduce the entire population to spiritless automatons, lacking both the energy and desire to cure the condition that afflicts them. Commander Corey has been able to save Saturn City from the epidemic thanks to the aid of Gelwin, a galactic prime investigator from the Tolorma star system. Right now in Space Patrol headquarters at Saturn City, Buzz and Happy face the task of capturing Brokoff before he can strike again. Here, Happy. This is the latest report from the medical section. Put it with the others. Yes, sir. All the documents you wanted to take with us are right here in the desk. Oh, quite a stack. Mm, now that the panic's over, what good are they? Mm. You'll know what to expect if Brokoff spreads his poisonous plant, his weed of despair in some other city. Oh, he'll be mad him before he has a chance. Mm. What we saw here in Saturn City could happen to a whole planet. Millions of people with nothing wrong with them physically, but with a weariness of spirit, a complete loss of our And that wouldn't take much to conquer such a kind of Well, there's one consolation. It doesn't take very much of the remedy to cure the sickness. And don't forget, every drop of the solution we had was used up here in Saturn City. Brokoff controls the rest. Well, how about Dr. Arnold's experiments? Uh, didn't he tell us that uh, he was sure he could duplicate the chemical structure of the remedy? And it's a matter of whether Dr. Arnold can stay in his feet when the job's finished. If Carol to help him, he may succeed he can't count on Dr. Arnold performing a chemical miracle. We've got to find Brokaw. It's going to be tough. We don't even know what he looks like. Oh, he's got a good ally in Gelwin. He knows Brokaw's methods. He's just as anxious to capture Brokaw as we are. Get it, will you, huh? Yes, sir. Get it happy here. Yes, Sergeant. Oh, just a moment, please. The commander, it's communications. Probably, Carol. I'll take it. Go ahead. Hello, Buzz. How are things in Saturn City? Well, fine, Carol. Transportation is 90% normal. Communication's a little better than that. Wonderful. Any new cases? None reported. Everything's pretty well under control. Any word about Droke? No. Galvin hasn't reported in since 700 hours. I let him take a space patrol cruiser to check a lead out toward Jupiter. How are you and Dr. Arnold coming along? Well, I'm fine. Dr. Arnold's in the Cheryl Hospital. He collapsed his a while ago. Is it serious? Well, he's had complete rest and quiet for 24 hours. He's trying to decipher his notes. 
me. It's some job. Are you close to anything definite, or is it too early to tell? I don't want to be too optimistic, guys, but it looks good. Awfully good. Doctor, last experiment cracked the key to the protein chain. That's great. I can only get his notes in shape. Our lab chemist has been able to make the remedy synthetic. Oh, fine. But don't work too hard. Remember what happened to Dr. Arnold. So much depends on his buzz, I couldn't slow down if I wanted to. All right, Carl. Happy and I are blasting off for terror right away. We'll see you in a few hours. I'll be at Dr. Arnold's lab, Buzz. And with good news, I hope. Good luck. Hurry out. Well, she really sounds like she was on the right track, doesn't she? Yes, sir. If she is, we'll be prepared for Brokaw's next epidemic of despair. Let's get to the space plane. Upon landing at Terra, Buzz and Happy go at once to Dr. Arnold's laboratory. There they find Carol slumped in a chair, exhausted. Scattered about the floor are crumpled slips of paper filled with chemical formulae. Well, hi, Carol. Nobody answered our knock, so we barged right in. Hey, Carol. There's no... Carol. Carol. Hello, Buzz. How did you make out? Make out? Uh, with the experiments, uh, for the remedy. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, it's no use. It's all so cute. You sounded so confident in the space of this and Santa. Oh, you're just tired, Carol. Uh, here, I'll pick up the notes and later when you're rested. Throw them in the know. rubbish to see later. That's what I was going to do when I felt up to it. Carol, oh, look at it. Raise your head. Yes, Bob. Look at this. Her eyes. they got dark circles around them. They look sort of glassy. I thought about this. They're not like the but something else. Come on. Come She looks just like those people on Saturn. Carol, who else has been in this lab beside you and Dr. Arnold? No one. Now, think carefully. Has anyone been in here? Anyone at all? There's flowers over there on the table. How did they get here? The messenger brought them. Where are they from? I forget the cards in the basket. Get it, Happy. Oh, yes, sir. Carol hasn't been off terror. I think she caught the sickness here. It hasn't affected Dr. Arnold. This case is entirely different. Well, what's on that card? It's printed, sir. It says, uh, to Miss Carol Carlyle with the compliments of the management of Sun Garden Venus. Carol, what is this sun garden, do you know? It's a new park or something. Flowers are a promotion stunt, I suppose. That means hundreds of baskets may have been set out. Perhaps that's what they're from. There must be a dozen different kinds, eh? And what I know about flowers, you're going to engrave on a tulip seed. Tulips grow from bulbs. Proves my point. This proves mine. Look at this thing hidden among the flowers. A weed with a purple pond. Brokaw's work. Got to seal up this lab and get Carol to the hospital. And we got to find out who else received flowers from Brokaw. Near the banks of the Turquoise River on the planet Venus is a group of buildings once used as field offices by the Venus Fruit Company. Now the small settlement serves as a base of operations for Brokaw, a criminal sought by the interplanetary police of two solar systems. At this moment, Brokaw stands before a small plastic dome as his accomplice, Larch Feister, emerges, cautiously shuts the door tightly, and removes the heavy mask and gloves. <sighs> I'd rather do anything in the universe than go into that dome with a wasp. Anything. Well, then you shouldn't object to your next assignment. What is it, though? Okay? The Secretary General's daughter, Carol, is quite sick. And it appears that I am the only one who can cure her. Well, then your plan works. You got the flower. Yes, most unfortunate. She was working on a process to cure the very sickness that attacked her. Well, you told me the only cure comes from those insects in there, those, those wasps. That's right, Pastor. The insects feed on that plant, and their bodies develop an antitoxin. But forget the wasps. I want you to take the spaceship and contact Commander Corey. Contact Corey? Yes, by space phone. You will present my terms for curing the daughter of the Secretary General. Now, Joe Club, listen. You get into trouble, you can get away to another solar system, but I'm a citizen of the United Planets. I can't afford to... You should have thought of that before. It's too late to back out now. Now, here are your instructions. Elsewhere in Commander Corey's central office on Terra, Buzz inserts a spool of microtape in the playback machine. Listen to this, Happy. Communications picked up this message in the quarter. Yes, sir. Attention all Space Patrol communication centers. This is a message to Commander Corey. Relay it to him immediately. I'm speaking for Drokov, the only person in the entire universe who can restore the health of Carol Carlisle. Don't waste time trying to locate the source of this signal. Just listen. It's from the spaceship, isn't it? Probably. Carol Carlisle will be completely cured if you cooperate. Bring Carol and the sum of 50,000 credits to the point in space which I will give you in a moment. Upon payment of this money, 
Carol will be given enough of the remedy to effect a cure. Do not attempt to capture Drokov's ship either before or after our rendezvous in space. Here are your instructions. Your ship with Carol and the 50,000 credits must be at the intersection of the Mars orbit and Space Meridian 84.06 at 1300 hours. That's it, Hap. As you can see, Drokov's being very key. If we could only grab Drokov first, we don't have any lead on him. Our agents have checked the employees of Sun Gardens and Venus the right here. Drokov or one of his men managed to put that poisonous plant in the basket and come up the town. And how about the other basket? They have been examined. Carl was the only one who received the weed of the spell. Well, how about Gilden? Maybe he's located Drokov. There's no word from Gilden. It's all up to us. And what are we going to do? The one thing we can do to save Carol, put her and the money aboard Terra 5 and head for the Mars orbit. At 1,300 hours, the Terra 5 approaches the rendezvous point. As a private cruiser draws close, Buzz and Happy wait anxiously for a spaceophone signal. But Carol, whose life depends on the success of this mission, sits bored and silent in the control compartment, showing no interest in proceedings. There must be Drokov's ship. Why don't we cut on the spaceophone? Drokov might interpret it as a signal to other space patrols. Because the Carol will have to play at Drokov's way. Drokov calling Commander Corey aboard the Terra 5. Here we go. Corey here. Go ahead, Brokoff. So far, Corey, you seem to have obeyed my instructions. There are no ships visible in our view scope. They've been ordered to remain outside a 10,000 DU perimeter of this point until Carol is safely back on Terra. That's very good. Now, when we join airlock with your ship, you will send Carol to the airlock with the 50,000 credits. Just a matter of giving her a few ounces of the solution. Why don't you come aboard our ship? Because I don't trust you. Send Carol into my cruiser alone. How do I know I can trust you? You have no other choice if you want to save Carol. All right, join airlocks. I'll send her aboard. Hurry out. Carol. Carol, are you listening? Yes, Buzz. Are you willing to walk alone to the airlock in the other ship? Oh, Buzz, I'm so tired. Carol, listen. If you do this one little thing for me, you can have a nice long nap. No one will bother you. How about it? All right. We're in contact, sir. Come on, Carol. It won't take long. On your feet. I'll help you to the airlock. Steady now. Gee, man, I'm getting worried. Carol's been in Brokaw's ship for nearly an hour. We're in no position to pressure him. I've got to find out what the trouble is. Corey calling Brokaw. Brokaw, what's wrong over there? Uh, nothing, Commander. Everything just fine. Well, what's the delay? Shouldn't take you an hour to count fifty thousand credits. Oh, the money is quite satisfactory, Corey. I've merely been waiting for Carol to get up enough energy to return to your ship. She was in quite a weakened condition, you know. Then let one of us come and get her. I guarantee I won't try anything. Carol is on her feet now and on her way through the airlock. All right, Drokov, forget this. We're not cutting our holding field until we're satisfied that you gave her the remedy for the sickness. You'll see the improvement immediately, Corey. Drokov out. You think he's telling the truth, sir? Yeah, that's possible. It's all Carol can do to get into Brokaw's ship. The remedy takes some time to have an effect. He's at the inner hatch, sir. All right, half open. Hi, Carol. How... Brokaw. I decided to bring Miss Carol back personally. And don't move. I got a gun in her back. What's the idea, Brokaw? I changed my plans, Corey. Carol, are you all right? Did he give you that medicine? Yes, I, I drank something, but I don't understand all this. And I'm afraid I said something I shouldn't. He told me about some experiments of hers. Buzz, I didn't realize what I was doing. I can't let that knowledge out of my control. I'm taking the three of you with me. But you promised. And just to make sure there'll be no trouble... Oh, Buzz! And now, Carol, if you want to keep your friends alive, you'll do as I say. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. So, Ray, me... Well, Lisa, are you getting ready for a concert? Yes, I am, Captain Tufel. I'm going to sing our gang's favorite song. I'd sure like to hear that. Would you give me a little preview? Sure. N-E-S-T-L-E-S Nestle's make the very best chocolate. How do you like it? Oh, I love it, Lisa. Matter of fact, when you sing about Nestle's new coconut bar, I think it's everybody's favorite. I'm crazy about coconuts. She what a wonderful chocolate bar. So thick and sweet and smooth and rich. And all that crispy coconut inside. 
<laughs> Golly, I just can't get enough of it. Yes, Nestle's new coconut bar makes me feel that way, too. Can't get enough of that wonderful chocolate flavor and that fresh toasted coconut. You know, it's so crisp and so much fun to eat, I think we ought to have some right now. That is, of course, if you can eat before your concert. Gee, I can eat a Nestle's coconut bar anytime. Smoking rockets, this is the greatest. Honestly, James, you ought to try the sensational new Nestle coconut bar in the red and cream colored wrapper. Just one taste of this terrific new flavor combination, and you'll love it just as I do. Matter of fact, Space Patrollers, you'll go for all of Nestle's rich, smooth, luscious chocolate bars. You can take your pick of rich milk chocolate, almond chocolate, crunchy crunch, or the brand new, brand new Nestle's coconut. Whatever your favorite is, remember, N-E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, The Fugitive from Tolorma. The Secretary General's daughter, Carol, was suffering from a rapid loss of vitality caused by a plant known as the Weed of Despair. Brokoff, who controls the entire supply of the only remedy, offered to cure Carol for 50,000 credits. After treating Carol, he entered the Terra 5 using the girl as a shield and rendered Buzz and Happy unconscious with a ray gun. Right now, the space patrollers and Carol are prisoners aboard Brokoff's private cruiser. You're a dirty double-crosser, Brokoff. If I could get my hands Stop free... Stop wasting I... my time with your empty threats. Remember, I could easily have thrown you out into space. We know why you didn't. It would be hard to explain our disappearance to the space patrol when you're caught. There is another reason, Corey. If I had destroyed you, Carol would refuse to give me the information I want. What information? on how antitoxin for the weed of despair can be produced synthetically. She and Dr. Arnold seem to have blundered on the answer. If I told you anything, it was because I was weak and didn't realize what I was doing. I won't tell you anymore. Oh, yes, you will. Unless you want to see your friend suffer. Brokoff, did you ever consider what would happen if the sickness got out of control and you couldn't stop it? No, that has happened in another solar system. The llama. That's why Galvin's after him. I will take care of Galvin just as I'm taking care of you. What did you do with our ship? Blow it up? No, Corey. My assistant, Feister, is going to hide it on one of Jupiter's moons. It will serve as a spare star drive ship in case we suddenly have to leave your solar system. Who's Feister? Is he from Paloma, too? Oh, no, no. He's one of your own citizens. He'll join me on Venus in another ship after he hides the Terra 5. And now, if you will excuse me, I'll get to the controls. We are approaching Venus. Landing near the abandoned buildings near the Turquoise River, Brokoff forces his passengers from the ship at gunpoint. He locks Carol in one building, then takes Buzz and Appy to a structure adjoining a small transparent dome that shields the wasps and the poisonous plants. Right in here, gentlemen. What are you going to do with Carol? Well, it depends on how well she cooperates. There is a small laboratory here. Possibly she and I can manufacture a cure for the sickness. How will you know if you've succeeded? It's very simple. We will test it on you. On us? We haven't got the sickness. No, no, not yet. But you soon will. Do you see that air duct up near the ceiling? What about it? Well, it leads to that small plastic dome next to this building. When I turn a valve, air from that dome will enter this room. Air containing millions of spores from those purple weeds. When I return, you will have lost your will to resist. You will be quiet, docile, and weak. You're going to use us as guinea pigs, is that it? Exactly. And if you're hoping I'll be affected too, I am very sorry to disappoint you. The remedy has made me immune to the sports. I'll see you later, gentlemen. Well, now what, Commander? You'd stand a fat chance of breaking that door down. And the window's too small to crawl to. Maybe there's something in here we could use to plug up that air duct. There's nothing in the room. No rags, paper, or anything. Hey, I've got it. Our jackets. If we could remove the screen from the vent and stuff our jackets in there. Good idea. Brokoff's opened the valve. Air's feeding through from the dome. Happen. I'll boost you up on my shoulders. You stuff your jacket into the vent. Let a sleeve hang down so we can grab it in a hurry. Yes, sir. When we hear Brokoff at the door, get your jacket on quickly. We couldn't be weak and groggy, like Carol was. Great. Okay, let's work fast. Up you go. Right. How's that, Happy? Oh, fine, sir. I can reach the vent, okay? 
Now to take my jacket off. I'm going to look for that screen. It won't be any trouble. I'll just pry it off and... Uh-oh. What's the matter? The vent pipe is full of wasps. They must have been sucked in from the dome by the rush of air. When I take the screen off, they'll come swarming into the room. Maybe we won't be stung. Move very slowly. Most people are stung by bees and wasps because they get excited and flash their arms around. Just take it easy. Don't worry, Commander. I will. I wonder when Drokov's coming back. I hope it's soon. I'm afraid some of that contaminated air is getting in here in spite of the jacket. How do you feel, Major? Mm. Tell you the truth, sir. So tired. I remember, when Drokov does come in, he tends you weak. And if he doesn't come in pretty soon, he won't be pretending. Anyway, we didn't get stung by the wasps. You were right about moving slowly, sir. There are several in here in the room, and they haven't even come near us. Somebody's outside. The cat pulled the jacket out of the Yes, sir. I hope it doesn't stir up the wasps. I hope it does. I bother putting it on. I'm tired. Well, gentlemen, how do you feel? Aren't you going to answer me? Well, it doesn't matter. Come on. Come on, I said. Oh, what for? Yes, Drokov, we aren't causing any trouble. No. No, not you. But Carol is. She won't cooperate. But if she could see me work you over some, she might change her attitude. Let's go. Well, why don't you bring Carol here? I said move. Do I have to? Hmm. A very definite symptom. No sensitivity to pain. Well, maybe you will feel... <laughs> what? How did they get in there? They were all right till you stirred them up. Come on, Happy, let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Those wasps will keep Brokoff busy for a while. We'll get Carol. I slugged him, but it didn't even faze him. I know. The poison plan is taking effect. We're both weak. No match for Brokoff. Here's where he locked Carol up. That's locked. I wonder if we've got enough strength to break it down. Let's hit it together with all we've got. One, two, three. It's giving way. Once more. He... Was happy. Come on, Carol. Brokoff will be after us pretty quick. Yeah, we couldn't disarm him. Oh, if only we can get to his ship in Blasto. Well, first, we got to get some of that remedy for the sickness. Where's the lab, you know? Well, I think it's that building over there, Bob. Come on. Do we have to get the remedy now? I feel fine. Well, for you, Carol, it's for us. Into the lab, quick, before Brokoff sees us. Yeah. Oh, we made it. Start searching. Remember what to look for on the label, don't you? Yeah, yes, sir. Why, do you mean that you and Hap have been infected? That's right, Carol. I'm trying to fight it, but... We're going to get some of that solution soon. We'll be of no use to ourselves or anybody. Believe me, right now, I'm just going on my own momentum. Keep searching, Hank. We have to drop out of the fight. that just leaves Delvin to get it broken. Oh, and, and maybe Delvin's out already. We, we haven't heard from him in two days. Hank. And then the top shelf, that bottom one. Where? Yeah. Yes, sir, that's it. That's the reason. Be careful lifting it down. Probably all there is in the whole place. We can only get it to Drokov's ship before he... Buzz, look out! It's Drokov, and he's got a blast gun. Stay right where you are! All of you! Commander, the blast smashed the bottle. The medicine was gone. That's right, cadet. There's no more anywhere on Venus. Now, each minute, you'll get more and more tired. More full of despair. Oh, now, Carol, you'll have to help me. If you fail, you'll see your friends lose their vitality, their will to live. Eventually, they will be too tired to breathe, their hearts too weary. Oh, stop it, stop it. I'll help you, but just save them. Yeah. At first, I'll lug them up where there'll be no more trouble, and where there'll be no insects to help them. I see the wasps got in a few good jabs, Brokaw. Your face and neck are all swollen. Well, you'll pay for those things, don't worry. I suppose they're pretty painful. Yes. If it's any satisfaction to you. But it's nothing serious. That's good. And you won't mind another sting or two. So what are you talking about? I think there's a wasp on your collar. Yeah, yeah he's crawling up towards you next. Where? Yeah, he's a big oh, one, where? too. Where? Look, look out, he's buzzing around. Yeah. I'll get him. <laughs> you know, Commander, if there had been a wasp on Brokaw, uh, you sure would have caught it. Pick up the gun, Hap. We'll take Brokaw to the ship. All right, on your feet. You tricked me, Corey. But it won't do you any good. You're sick. And you'll get sicker. And nothing can save you. We'll give you a brainograph test. And we'll know where you've hidden the remedy. Why, well, there's a ship coming in. It's going to land. That's right, Corey. And you plus. That's five, sir, ship. 
My partner, you can't get away. You stay here in the lab. Those we'll Feister gets out of the ship. Then we'll grab him. You won't get him, Commander. He'll be on guard. Why should he be? Because I warned him. After you two broke away from me, I went straight to the spacophone and cut on the automatic warning signal. Well, what are you trying to give us? Just what? wait and see. Feister knows something is wrong here, so he won't take any chances. I'm afraid he's right, though. Feister could barricade himself in the ship and hold us off till the sickness took effect. Yes, you're licked, Corey. You might as well face it. Well, the, the hatch is opening in that ship that just landed. Perhaps see if you can tell that Feister's not here. Don't let him see you. Yes, sir. Feister's smart. He won't come close enough for you to trap him. Commander, it's Galvin. Galvin? Yes, sir. He's running towards us. And he's all alone. Galvin and Feister's ship? That's impossible. Take a look, Joker. Recognize him? It is Galvin. Come on, McLaughlin. Get moving, Get moving, Joker. Hi, Galvin. Commander, happy. Well, I'm certainly glad to see him. I was afraid I'd never see you again. The feeling was mutual. Commander, you got him. You got Goku. Yes, but until you showed up, I wasn't sure we could hold him. His partner, Feister, is locked up in the ship. And by the way, the Terra 5 is on Jupiter's third moon where Feister hit it. That's where I caught him. He... Commander, the unhappy looked pretty sick. I suppose we do. Brokoff managed to expose us to the weed of the sun. We've got to get treatment right away. Well, that's just the trouble. There isn't a drop of the remedy on me. Yes, there is, Happy. There's a supply aboard Feist's ship. Wow, Gelwin, you're sure a lifesaver. Certainly, huh? I don't know how we can repay him. It'll be easy. Just turn Brokoff over to me. No, Commander, no. Don't do it. You caught me. I'm your prisoner. Well, what's the matter, Brokoff? Don't you want to go back to the lawn? You'll make a trade, Gelwin. You turn Feist over to me, and you can take Brokoff. It's a deal. Come on, Commander. You and Happy better get some of that remedy into you right away. Okay. But I feel a lot better knowing that the people in your solar system and in ours are safe from Brokaw. It's same here. Uh-oh. Brokaw, you better watch it. There's a wasp on the back of your neck. Ah, you fool. How many times do you think you can trick me with that stupid... Li- get it off me. Get it off. It's all right. It's flying away. Oh, my neck. Oh, the pain is terrible. Uh, I, I feel for you, Brokaw. You know, it, it sure must be awful when a... When a pain in the neck gets a pain in the neck. Yeah. <laughs> What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Ah, uh, Nestle's luscious new coconut bar. That's for me. It's such a superb flavor combination. Thick, sweet, smooth milk chocolate and fresh toasted coconut. So delicious and such fun to eat because it gets crisper with every bite. Just talking about it makes my mouth water. Me too, Commander. Whenever I think about that sensational, creamy, rich, crisp, eaten coconut bar, I get completely carried away. Can't concentrate. Can't work. And there's only one cure. What's that? Why, eating a Nestle's coconut bar, of course. That fixes everything. Good idea, huh? Let's all have one. Space Patrollers, you'll really go for Nestle's wonderful coconut bar. Smoke and Rockets, you'll go for all Nestle's delicious chocolate bars, and especially our new favorite, coconut. Because, you know, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. You can say that again, Hap. Gladly. Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston. Produced and directed by Larry Robertson. Executive producer, Helen Moser. Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, and Isa Ashdown. Dick Tufel speaking. This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's Chocolate Bars. This program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio.